Hi everyone, I trust that you're enjoying this time with us. Our next session will be with Pastor Ryan Uester, who is our campus director as well as youth leader in the Every Nation Midran congregation. I trust that the Lord will speak to you and impact you through this time in the session. Uh, how, how not strong you feel. You see, authority is an interesting thing. <clears throat> it's not based on how you feel. It's not based on feelings at all. It's irrelevant. You know, they, they often use the example of the traffic cop. You know, I mean, there's like an 18-wheeler driving towards him. And, you know, he gets in the road and puts out his hand. The thing doesn't have any choice but to stop. Look, in, in the natural world, obviously, if you continue that example, the natural, it can continue. But then, obviously, you know, there'll be some serious consequences. Yeah. But all things being equal, if that principle plays out how it's supposed to, there's no way that that truck can continue. And here's the thing. If he woke up, didn't have breakfast, and isn't feeling like the day is going well, he can still stand in front of that truck and say, stop, this truck can't go anywhere. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not about how you feel. Yeah. It never was about how you feel. It's about what you carry. Yeah. It's about understanding that whether I'm good day, you know, yeah, good day, bad day, it really is irrelevant. And one can talk about that for a while, you know, about good days and bad days, really not being something that's relevant to Christians. Sure, we feel certain ways. But the way you feel doesn't change who you are. Yeah. You know, if you really believe you're seated in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, whether you feel like it or not, whether you feel like you're having a path, yeah, sometimes you feel stirred, which is great. But it, as I say, it doesn't change who you are. You can stand in front of that truck. Whatever that thing is, whether the enemy's telling you you feel spiritual, you feel powerful, it is irrelevant. Know what you carry. That's the, what's important. Know what you carry and don't be afraid to apply it. And remember, you start off where you are. You look at who you are. You look at someone else, their story, their example. You get inspired by it. You don't look at them. Like, what are they doing? And then you're like, oh, no, but I can't do that. Really, that's, a, that's irrelevant. And I was going to say something else. <laughs> I, yeah, I, wasn't, I don't think it was that, was that complimentary. So it's, it's irrelevant. You know, you look at your circumstances. That's where you're supposed to apply faith. You know, there's a certain reality of applying faith for someone else's circumstances, absolutely. But you know what? I think start off with your own. You know, we've got enough stuff to go through, you know. So, yeah, you pray for other people and all of that. But what I'm saying is authority, number one, it doesn't, have, doesn't it's irrelevant how you feel, number one. And number two, start off where you are. Have a look at what's, what's going on in my space. Okay, if I know I have... X, Y, Z, one, two, three. How do I apply that in my space? That's how you start. That's how you learn and that's how you grow. Amen. Amen. Okay. So the power, <clears throat> the power to give orders, the power of the right to give orders, the power of the right to enforce obedience, the power to exercise control, or exercise control over our circumstances, over everything around us. We've been given that ability in Jesus. The, the definition I like the most, and that's what I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what I'm going to concentrate on today, is the power to determine. A th part of the definition of authority is the power to determine. You can determine, and I'm trusting God that he's going to get that across clearly this morning. You have the power to determine. Just think of that word determine. That means things must align. Yeah. They have to align. If it was as simple as you knowing they have to align and then they align, well, then I guess we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't need it. It's because there has to be application. Amen. Yeah. So the Bible even says faith without works. Yeah. So faith needs some application. If you know something, you need to apply it. So anyway, let's, let's get started. So we can, the power to determine. So you can determine on a personal level. You can look at your personal circumstance. You look and look at what's going on around you. You can say, you know what? I'm not happy with where my finances are. Yeah. God, this thing must change. This thing must change. And, you know, maybe God will speak to you and say it'll change like this. But you start off by speaking to it. You start off by telling whatever that thing is. It must change. Yeah. It has to change. If it doesn't change, well, it can't not change. That's, as I said, the authority you carry. Now, I'm using something, an example, which is... A little bit intangible on purpose because I'm going to use an example from our own life to illustrate the point. 
So what we do is just because something's not tangible, like it's a health condition or something, it doesn't mean your words have any less power. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And obviously, remember, we're linking all of this with prayer. So when you're on your knees, there's nothing you can't change. Yeah. And I think we know that, but you know, it's good to be reminded about that. Whether it's tangible or intangible, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So let me use an example. <clears throat> so I was studying once upon a time, and um Second thing I went to study, and that was, I did a theology degree major in community development. So anyway, this theology degree, um, normally when you study theology, you also study some biblical languages as well. So you do Hebrew, you do Greek, you do one of the other, or you do both. So for that particular year, um, I think it was my second year, my first year, I can't remember, we did, we did Greek. So... Which is good. You kind of start to understand it. Gives you some, you know, some obviously some more insight. But and here was the thing: Greek wasn't as easy as um, I'm, I'm not sure if the whole class thought it wasn't easy, but you know, the whole class. Yeah. So we were all in the same boat together. So Greek is an interesting language because often <clears throat> you can see. I mean, you understand if you've ever studied Greek before. Often you can see the English word inside the Greek word. So you can, you know, you look at it and you can say, oh, well, okay, no, that it's kind of makes sense how it links with English. So that's fine. But obviously you've got to link them together. There's grammar, the, you know, there's tense, there's a whole lot of things. So it's not that simple. Yeah, but to say I was seeing flames in Greek is not the same. Yeah. You know, like it, was, it was proper. I mean, I remember, I think the one day I was just, and yeah, that wasn't, I, I can't remember what it was. I mean, if it was 50%, I probably would have been happy. So it was far less than, I don't know, if it was 50 or 40, or, but it was bad. Or whatever, it, it was what it was, and I wasn't happy with it. Mm-hmm. And it definitely wasn't 50. Because at, at, at that point in time, you know, sometimes you get to a subject, you're like, you know what, even if it's just 50, <laughs> just, just, yeah. Yeah, just, I don't want to do just, but sometimes, and obviously, you know, we need to have an excellent spirit, and we want to excel, absolutely. But sometimes, you know, I'm sure we all be get to that point being like, you know what, just a 50. <laughs> if I can just get that, you know, that'll be, that'll be okay. So I want to say, yeah, so we get to that point sometimes. So what I started doing, <laughs> was I took um, I took a, which scripture was it now it'll, it'll, it'll come to me I started speaking to my Greek I started speaking to, and I'm using this example on purpose because it's intangible yeah. and you, you know it's something it's easy to kind of you know, lay hands on someone even maybe even speak to your own body say listen you must like that but if it's intangible it's, I guess it shows that our words have power yeah. and again linking it with the place of prayer so, you know, that's what we do. We change things. We carry authority when we pray because of what Jesus done. So I just started speaking to that Greek. I said, Greek, you will line up. Greek, you will, find, you will align. So I started, no, I started speaking to it. I started saying, every mountain before me shall become a plain. That's the scripture I was standing on. So I said, Greek, you will become a plain. Before me, you will become a plain. This is what the word, I command you to become a plain. So I don't know if you've ever spoken to a subject that you had spoken before. So anyway, I had spoke to it. I had spoken to my subject. So I was speaking to it. I was commanding. I said, Greek, no, no, no. You're going to line up. You're going you're gonna to align. You're going to function how you should. You're going to reflect what you should. You will become a plain. Every mountain before me shall become a plain. And that includes you. I speak to you and I command you to become a plane. So obviously, you know, maybe to cut a long story short from there, what happened was I went into the exam and this was obviously somewhere, you know, the, the first semester normally is not that challenging um, sometimes, but not normally. And then you get into the second semester, especially if it's a one-year course. Normally the second semester, you know, everything kind of comes to a head and final exam or all that. So I wrote my final exam I remember I got, I can't remember what it was. I was like 70 something, 72, 75. I can't remember what it was. Um, I may have, yeah, I don't know. I, I was at the top of the class. I, I can't remember where. I didn't read. That wasn't the most important thing for me. I, I just knew where I started. Amen. I knew where I started. I knew where I ended. So that's just to show you the kind of authority we have. That's to show you what we carry. And it doesn't, have, it doesn't matter if it's tangible. It doesn't matter if it's intangible. We still carry authority. Amen. Authority in the place of prayer. We can get on our knees. There's nothing we cannot do. There's a nice quote. I'm quoting him because it's his experience. There's a nice statement, Pastor Eric, or story he likes to share. And um, he says that the the Lord spoke to him one day. And he he said to him, I guess he didn't say to Pastor Eric. I think he he said to him, Eric, the enemy has no defense against your prayers. The enemy has no defense against your prayers. Just because the thing doesn't move, 
in 30 minutes or three minutes or 24 hours. Doesn't mean the thing's not coming down. Amen. Amen. Sometimes a you know, sometimes a mountain doesn't always go. Or well, you know, sometimes you think of those um so, sort of um how can I what example can I use? So even if you think of a mountain, you know, sometimes it's being it might be your prayers are busy hollowing it out in the inside. And so then it just takes one, then it, then it gets to a point. And then you just get one last gust of wind and the whole thing comes crumbling down. Amen. Amen. But you were still pushing, you were still pressing. And that's what brought that whole thing down. Just because it doesn't happen overnight doesn't mean your prayers aren't being affected. What I I like to tell people, what I like to tell people is that when the enemy is whispering, then, then you must be encouraged and you must be excited. Because when he's whispering, then you know you're gaining ground. Yeah. Then you know you're making headway. Yeah. What do I mean? Very simply. Think about it like this. If you are really going in the wrong direction, like you're wasting your time praying into this, you're not getting anywhere, you're making no progress, this thing's never going to change, your family members are never going to change, you're never going to get out of this situation as an individual, whatever it might be. If that really was the truth, why are you wasting your time do you not have better things to do? Why come and tell me that? Like if I'm the enemy and I'm and someone is going in the wrong direction, I would leave them. Don't tell them they're going in the wrong direction. You get me? But no, 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 come back. Like you're not, that's not the way to defeat me. Who's gonna do that? You get what I'm saying? No, that's not the way to, to get joy, peace, happiness, breakthrough. Don't go there, come back. The enemy of your soul is gonna do that. There's no choice. So when he's whispering, that means it. If we really, so we always call the enemy strategic. That's what a strategic person is going to come and tell you. Listen, yeah, it's not working. You're not, you're not getting, you're not progressing at all. In fact, you're going backwards. What you are doing is making your situation worse. If you are getting that, you know you're going. Backwards. Amen. I hope you're. Yeah, there is no way the enemy would whisper to you. If he's got a whole world to keep in darkness and to run and to influence. He's making, why would he waste his time whispering if you're going the wrong direction? Yeah. You would be rejoicing. You know, if someone, if you really don't like someone and they're going the wrong direction, you're going to step, you know, you're not going to, you're going to go even further back and you're going to be quiet and you'll be like, you know, maybe we can just be praying that they'll continue. But you, know, you, can, you don't say anything. You're just standing here. You're like, you know what? I hope they don't. Let them just continue. That's what you do if you don't like someone. You don't go say, no, no, no. You know, try and call them back. You don't do that. When the enemy is whispering, no, you're getting ground. That's when you're going forward. That and 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 here's the thing: when your circumstances are working together, you're feeling tired and it's a bad day, and you're emotional and it's just terrible, and nothing looks like it's changing. And there's whispering. You probably right. Breakthrough probably right there. Yeah. I'm sure you. I, I, if I ask every single person here, you would put up your hand. You would tell me that you've seen that before. Yeah. The worse it is, the more intense it gets. And then it's a whole barrel because then he's using circumstances, he's using your yeah. friends or not friends, or yeah, he's using your emotion, he's using the fact that you haven't eaten or you missed breakfast. You know, it's just all coming together. Yeah. Then you get a bad phone call from so-and-so, it's also on your case, you fail something at school, you know, or whatever, or you get, you know, something work doesn't work out. And all of that comes together in that one day. Then you know you're close. Amen. We are seated in heavenly place of Christ. We cannot lose. It's not possible. Where we are positioned is far too high. Hallelujah. Okay, moving very quickly from there. So, we can determine within our communities. And I really like this. And I just want to encourage each one of you. You know, even as, you know, know, we only in Namibia, or I'm only in Namibia for a short time. But just to encourage you maybe to go with this. Your community, and obviously larger than that, but wherever you stay, you can determine. The climate of that community, the, 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 the culture of that community, the, the behavior in that community, what you see playing out, you have the power, dear Lord, you have the power to determine that. If you see something you don't like, that's when you need to say, okay, you know what, who's the authority figure here? Mm-hmm. You've been placed there for a reason, whether you chose that location or not. If you're there and you believe you're supposed to be there, it's for a reason. And you know what, it's because they need you. And probably, and the more they need you, the more they'll probably be, they won't be nice to you. Yes. That's the truth. The more they'll dislike you and be horrible and be difficult and want to kick you out or whatever. That's just the enemy thing, you know. So I don't need to go into that. I'm sure you understand. Yeah. Wherever you are, God has placed you there for a reason. So 
be encouraged. Start looking at your community, wherever it is that you stay, whatever that community looks like, and say, okay, you know what? What needs to change here? If I've been if I've been deployed here, that's the truth. If I've been deployed here by God, because I believe if you love God and you're walking with God, nothing happens by just by coincidence. If you're really listening to God and you know you end up saying whatever, and you're listening to God and you're following God, wherever you find yourself at the moment is not coincidence, it's not possible. God is, if you think the enemy is strategic, and we mentioned it in passion. Number one, who created him? There's, there's, a, there's a master strategist which, you know, he didn't even see Jesus coming. That's the truth. But when I said Jesus, the outcome of that whole thing, he didn't even see it. That was clueless. You know, he was just trying, you know, his thing, and then, you know, he put on one, and then he's back. He actually just, all he did was he made the process happen. So, any, you know, whatever, he got himself in trouble in the process. So, anyway, we can determine what happens in our community. I remember there was a, there was a time... Um, <clears throat> this also links a bit with what Pastor Eric was sharing last night. He, he said, I think there was a question about what time to pray. Mm-hmm. So yes, there are there are strategic times. Maybe there's some times where you know certain things even take place. But I think that you know what's important is you know all of us will have. Or for me, let me let me let me use myself. So what's important for me is how is God leading me in that season. That's the most important. So, so generally, most of us will have a, a like a time and a place. You know, it's maybe a certain time in the day, or you know, it's a certain length of time, even you know, whatever that looks like for us. And that's fine. You continue with that, but you need to be open for what God is leading you to do, because it could just be a concentration for a certain season, or you shift the time, or you shift the location. And God knows why. He won't always open our eyes. Sometimes he will, but he won't always. Sometimes our minds actually. There's a part we're playing in a bigger scheme, you know, and you just, you know, we, we can't, our brains can't contain it. So it's just to say, okay, yes, Lord, if you really are my Lord, yes, I will do what you're telling me, you follow it to me. Anyway, so uh, I remember there was a time in my in my estate, so where we, where we stay in, in Midrand, there's a place where we stay. And um, <clears throat> so I was, I think at that time I was praying, I think it was about, it was about three times a day. There was like an early morning, then there was a later morning, and then there was like an, an early afternoon. There were three points in prayer. There was a, a specific time, you know, I, I'm not going to go into the details of time, but just there were three points. In, and, and I really felt that, I, and, and there have been different times. Sometimes I've, I've done more of my praying, you know, at our church building. Sometimes it's more in our house. Sometimes it's been more outside, you know, just outside. So, um, and this time it happened to me. So generally, I I'm obviously walk up and down a lot when I pray, as you as you probably seen. So and so what happens is sometimes when I'm when I'm outside, then seasons when I've been outside for quite long, like I have my my running shoes on, I have my my shorts and t-shirt, and I'm just walking up and down. So I mean, most people think I'm exercising. The funny thing, the funny thing is, God is incredible. That that walking around and everything, there've been quite a few neighbors because obviously you've moved a couple of times. So. There have been quite a few neighbors who actually come and say, you know what? I've been so inspired and so challenged, you know, by your exercise. You know. so, so now they've started. So I'm like, you know what? God will just use anything. So they are fitter as a result of seeing me. You know, that, that's fine. They don't know what's happening under my breath. I'm not afraid. You know, I'm not, I'm not obviously you know, going to shout in there. No, there's, no, there's a place for volume and there's a place for, you know, like, your breath. So I think, I think we know that. Anyway, so... <clears throat> So that was a couple of times a day. I, I can't remember how long it was because there's been a couple of times that God has, has done that. It, maybe it was about six months. I'm actually not sure. Mm-hmm. So our estate now, if you go there, and it's been like that for most of the time. I think we've had, so this is, yeah, actually I can't even tell you, but there's a the same amount. There's probably about four or five, no, about five or six smaller complexes within the within the big estate. So it's, and each one of those complexes has about like 40 or 50 houses in and there's one. You add all of those together, whatever that number is, is the same amount of freestanding houses. Mm-hmm. So that's a anyway, so the whole time I've been there, I think we've been there about seven, I have many years now, seven, eight, whatever it is. Um I, I think I've heard of two break-ins. Two break-ins at whole, I mean, there's a lot of houses and a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Two break-ins at whole time. And one time the fence was down, the other time something's disappeared. And I'm not sure, I mean, it was someone's friend who was angry. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, but, but, but the thing is, and so many people have remarked, they've said, when they come in, I just, you hear people talking and whatever. And, you know, they say, you know what, 
It's so peaceful here. It's so peaceful here. They can't put their finger on it, but you know. And you know, you're not saying, and you're not thinking you're the only person. You're not like, oh, it's only because I prayed. You know, I mean, no. <laughs> like, but you know, you were led to do something. You did it, and you're pretty sure that it played a part in an overall outcome. So whatever your part is, is it's really irrelevant. You know, you know that you played a part, and you can determine from a community aspect what takes place. Mm -hmm. I really want to encourage you to do that today. Mm -hmm. Try and be open. Be in tune with what God has said. Not only your personal life and your circumstances. And yes, I know we go through a lot and sometimes it's difficult to look past what we're doing because there's a lot. But, you know, sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time, in fact, probably all of the time, all of the time, if God is saying, whatever God is saying, that's the answer to everything you're facing. Right. That's true. So if he's saying you need to reach out to so-and-so or you need to pray into this, and you're thinking, God, I don't even have enough time to cover my personal, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> when you do that, this will get sorted. Yeah. It's not even a, it's a guarantee. Yeah. God will never speak to you. He will never take you in a direct direction which isn't doesn't add value to you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so you're only so whenever he speaks, if he's speaking something great and you're like, how do I even get out of here to by all means, try and do that because that'll take you to where you need to be. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. So, as I say, encourage you, inspire you, start looking, start trying to be in tune with regards to your community. You're there for a reason. You've been deployed for a reason. You have the ability and the capacity to determine the climate, the atmosphere, the culture, the behavior, all of that of where you find yourself. It's up to you whether you actually do that or not. Amen. Um, and let me, we have to Get into the words. So let me use this example very quickly, and then we're gonna we're gonna look at some scripture. So, as you know, myself and my wife uh, for our church, we also have a campus ministry. Uh, we've been heading up the campus ministry of our church for about 12, 13 years now, as long as um, I've been in Madrid. So, so very quickly, just kind of long story short, when the the, the university's been through three sets of ownership since we've been there. So it started off with uh, the owners. I think they're the guys who started it. They ran it for about 20 years or so. Then they sold it to a company called Pearson, who's the biggest education company in the world. Um, and then recently, this group has now sold it. Uh, February last year, the new sale went through. There's a new set of owners. So it's an investment company and an online training company. So they came together, and I guess the one had the money, the one had the expertise, and they've now bought it. So they take it forward, which is great. And I believe they're the right um Group for, but now here's the interesting thing. This this particular this particular group whose name I shouldn't have mentioned, but I did. But anyway, so it doesn't matter. I won't mention it again. And I guess the video needs to be used for something. I'm sure we will just make the appropriate adjustments. So um, anyway, so they're the, they're the biggest education company in the world. So finances is not a problem. I mean, they report their you know their annual profit in like billions. Pounds or whatever it is, I can't remember if they're US or UK based, but it's in billions, like it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So for them, money is not an issue. They couldn't make this campus work. Oh. They just couldn't make it work. They put on top of buying it, they put a billion rand of infrastructure in. Oh. They put a billion rand in, in, on top of the price they paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was telling, I was telling Pastor Chris like, yesterday when we, when we chatted, I mean, just the humanities block, it's like a hundred and 110 million. They bought the, even this, then they bought them like an IT block. And they spent 220 million building a brand new campus in Pretoria from, I think they, they pretty much built it from the ground up, but transformed something else, and that was 220 million. So it was about a billion rand altogether. Mm. The thing just didn't work. Mm. It just didn't work. Yeah, there were some, maybe some decisions they made, and also some regulations that got some visa regulations changed. So things got difficult for foreign students to come in. So there were a couple of external things. But what also happened, I know the amount of prayer that was taking place for that campus. One of the things that was taking place, our students met. Uh, they used they, The prayer meeting ran for about two years straight. So they would meet in every evening. They would meet at 10 p.m. They'd pray till 12, 1 a.m., sometimes a little bit of every single night to the back for, about, for a two-year stretch. When they went home, they'd continue to pray in the WhatsApp group and all of that. So, and I, and I believe, so as I said, there was a lot of prayer going on. That's what determined the change. I believe this company, which had all the resources, the know-how, everything, they couldn't make it work. I mean, the numbers were just, they've continued. So, and now they've doubled now that the new company came in. They doubled within within one intake. They went, yeah, they doubled. So, um, and that's because of the amount of prayer that happened. I believe that this company that is 
no longer there. They had a part to play. They were supposed to bring in what they brought in. Yeah. God used them to play their part, and you know now they can exit left, and now the new company is supposed to come in, you know, take it to where it's supposed to be into the new season. Amen. Amen. That's authority. That's saying, okay, you know what? This is what God wants to do. Continue to pray, and you end up going in that direction. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's look at some scripture quickly. I think time is almost up, so I mean, probably close to closing. So Colossians chapter 2. Turn there with me. Colossians chapter 2, from verse 8. Okay. <clears throat> Where do I want to be? Okay, let's start from verse, verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God. Who raised him? Who raised him from the dead? Talking about Jesus, and you being dead in your trespass and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. That's what happens when we get born. All the handwriting against us, every accusation gets removed, which was contrary to us, and he's taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle over them, a public spectacle triumphing over them in it. We have authority because of what Jesus did. As we said earlier, it's that simple. We, we can exercise authority, the amount of authority that we can exercise. We can change circumstances. We can change situations. We can affect the behavior of a whole community, even a nation. That's what we carry. Amen. And we can do that because of what Jesus did. He died. He rose again. He paid for our sins, for every handwriting to be washed away, removed completely. For that handwriting to be washed away so we could get a fresh start and we could get an inheritance. Everything he died for as the son of God, everything that he, he bought, he purchased, we have. That's why we can walk in what we walk in. That's why we have what we have. So we are under his authority. We have authority because of what he did, because of what he, who he is. But here's, here's an important point which we cannot miss. Amen. James chapter 4. And this is something you have to remember. This is something this is something critical. Whenever we talk about authority, whenever we talk about the power to determine, we really want to determine circumstances. We want to determine what happens in our family, what happens in our personal life, what happens around us. We want to change our financial situation. We want to change the things in our lives which we don't lack. We have to take note of the scripture, this principle. I think James chapter 4, verse 7. Um, I'll read it to you now. Very well-known scripture. And I think I think it came up. I'm trying to remember now. I think it came up. I think it came up yesterday. Um, uh, sorry, not 5. Yeah, 4. 4, verse 7. <clears throat> Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Therefore, submit to God. Full stop. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I, yeah, I, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Pastor Chris. Someone brought it up yesterday. So we often we often overlook the first part and obviously get excited about the second part. You know, resist the devil and he will flee from you, which is good. But the first part, it lays the groundwork. Submit to God. If you're not submitted, he's not going to flee. We and here's the thing which we have to understand about authority. We only have authority because we've been given authority. We can only exercise authority to the extent we are under authority. That's how, look at Jesus. He never, ever deviated. That's why he could, that's why he could enforce, and we saw from his life what we did. He never deviated. Father, you know what? This is not comfortable, but, my, but not my will. No matter how hard it was, he said, God, what you are saying, that Father, what you are saying, I will follow that and I will, I will walk that out. He's, he always used to say, I, I do what I see my father doing. People he prayed for, people he spoke to. He saw some, a lot of the time, probably whatever, encounters or visions. Or, he, he saw a lot. 
And that's why he walked it out. So a lot of the people he ministered to, he probably saw it in his prayer time, you know, somewhere, somewhere before that God showed him, look, this is who you're going to come across in this time, and this is what you need to do. He never deviated. And he was perfect. And he was the son of God. If he needed to stay in line, how much more us? The amount of authority we can exercise is dependent on how much authority, how how we align with authority and fall under authority. Amen. Amen. So if we are living anyhow and expect to walk in authority, Mm. I don't know. You can fill in the the answer after that. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. Your your dream to see your I'm not sure. You're having a nice time. You're out for for a good walk. If you're expecting to 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 walk in authority, if you really want to determine situations and you want to live anyhow, then it's gonna change. The student will look back at you and say, Sorry, under what? You know, who are you? You know, I don't know you. You're not under you're not aligned. So if you're not aligned, you can't exercise authority. How you live matters. If God is speaking to you. If God is speaking to you, he's saying, this is what you need to do. And you are saying no. No matter how small or how big it is, no. That, that's, it's like, put a stop. It's, you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's like, you know, you, you, you've been held up. He's like, you know when a river gets dammed up? You know, you kind of like, it's kind of this, river, this rushing river is coming down the mountain and it's just it's going to go into a waterfall or it's just going to fill an entire area and you dam it right over here. That's what you do when God says, you need to do this, you need to live like this, or you must do that, or you mustn't do this, and you go and do something else. It just erases everything. Yeah. Then you're on your own. Yeah, yeah well, there's still the mercy of God. You'll still see some things. <laughs> but you won't see the fall. It's not possible. Yeah. I mean, if Jesus had to align, yeah. who are we to think we're greater? Could they be greater than Jesus? <laughs> That's it. If we think we can get results not aligning, they'd be greater than him. That's it. This is, the Bible says, servant can't be greater than his master. So then we, then, we, then we like, okay, well, Jesus, you know, it's a good model, but, you know, I, I, I kind of like my model. Amen. <laughs> so we can't live anyhow. But that point I want to close on, that point I want to close on. If God is telling you something, if he's whispering, it could be a behavior, it could be a, a, it could be a person you must reach out to, it could be anything. If he's whispering and he's speaking and you are not obeying, you are shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> You are, you are limiting your Christian walk, your growth, your development, the manifestation of God in your life. You cannot determine if you are not in alignment. It's that simple. Hallelujah. Amen. So authority is incredible. We can determine situations in our personal life, our community, our nation, our family. There's no extent to what we can't do. But if we're not in alignment, we won't see those results. It's not possible. Thinking we're greater than Jesus. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, Pastor Chris, I think on that note, um, maybe I'll pray quickly then. Okay, yeah, then we'll, then we'll do some Q&A. So let me just pray quickly. Father, we bless you. <clears throat> thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. Father, it's such a privilege and honor to be part of this prayer camp, Father God, to be part of what you are doing here. <clears throat> to be part of what you are, are working out, not in some people's lives, but in all of our lives. You are doing something in every one of our lives, Lord God. That's why we are here. We appreciate you and we honor you. We love you and we give you glory. We bless you and we give you praise. Thank you for doing more than we could ask or imagine. We commit the rest of the sessions of today to you, Lord God, and we thank you that they will go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, Father God. Thank you for what you've done, for what you are doing, for what you are going to do, and what we're busy experiencing. We bless you and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay. So, can we have some hands in terms of questions? Okay. We've got one there. And another one here. All right. So, we'll take about five questions. Huh? And please relate that to the subject. <laughs> Where can I get those those chicks that <laughs> um, I've got maybe two questions that I just want. 
Uh, he somehow. Okay. The Lord one, knows how they are related. Okay. okay. Um, one is. Pressure. <laughs> Close your eyes and talk. It's fine. Okay. One is um the proportion in terms of like the praying in time and praying in understanding, like maybe just that breakdown or the emphasis of that. Mm. And then the other one is um praying is it like with your mind? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's going to help her grow in her throat. It's fine, we can answer it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's okay. We can answer it. It's fine. Okay. okay, the one in authority is in, in terms of like when you are praying with your mind, like how much <laughs> yeah, effective that is. Com- not necessarily praying, it depends like praying out loud. Not necessarily loud, loud, but with words. The words when, Talking, yeah. Yes, in your thoughts. And the effectiveness of in terms of having the yes. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> praying in your thoughts does have a place, definitely. Um, I'm not going to touch on that. Uh, maybe possibly Eric will touch on it at one of the other sessions if it's important. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that. It's sort of outside of what we need to what we need to cover. But it's interesting just having a. If you think about <clears throat> Jesus when he was at the tomb of Lazarus, mm-hmm. you know, and he said, you know, um, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. You know, I'm doing this for them. It's not for me. Mm-hmm. So he's he's busy saying some things. You know, let me just. Let me just go here. Hold on. I, I want to quote properly what he said. Um, give me a second. You know what? It's fine. I'm not going to get caught up on it. Wait, here we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Father, I thank you that you've heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. So he started talking, he started saying some things for the benefit of the people, which means he probably didn't even need to say anything in order to sort that situation out. So, just, anyway, just some food for, I'm not going to go into, just some food for thought. He was saying, look, what I'm saying is for their benefit. Therefore, I probably didn't even need to say it. Yeah, but obviously there's some things he understood. It's not just, yeah, that's the first thing. So the second thing is, um, Paul, so when you talk about praying in your, in your understanding, uh, Jesus says, I think it's John, it's John 15 or 16. I'll find it now. But, but he says, um, uh, just let me get. Just give me a second. He said, "You until now you've asked for nothing in my name. Mm-hmm. Ask that you may receive, that your joy may be full." Mm-hmm. Which means there's a place for speaking, because mm-hmm. you're not asking. You know, if ask that you receive, that your joy may be full. That's not praying in tongues. Yeah. That's talking. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Makes sense. So there is a place for both. And then Paul says in 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 First Corinthians uh, fourteen. He said, I'll pray in my spirit and I will pray in my understanding, which shows that both of them are important. So if he's so that, that's the that's the first most important point. Okay, so they, they both have a place. How much you do it, it is sort of up to you. Some seasons will differ more than others. I remember um Dag Hewitt Mills. Uh, he he's a he's in a he's in a I guess it's not possible, but he's a, he's a church planter. I, I, 10, 15 years ago, he had about 400 churches. So how many he's got now, I actually don't know. I mean, it's maybe 600, 700, I don't know, whatever it is. Huh? 3, is it 3,000? Okay, so he's got 3,000 churches now. He says he prays about 90% of his praying times. Yeah, I know I know most of the time, I've said it to Pastor Eric about it, that's what, that's what he does as well. Also, in that region, you know, is also in that region how much he plays in tongues compared to his understanding. That's what I do as well. Most of my praying is in tongues. 
And the reason for that is, it was touched on yesterday, there was a comment that was made. I think you made the comment. You were saying, what you don't know is more than what you know. So even when we pray into a situation, sometimes you think, ah, this is definitely the way to sort it out. It's based on your, you get it, it's based on your understanding. And it's not to say there's not a place for that. It is a place for it. But just be aware that what you say, what you know, is less than what you don't know. What you don't know is much more. So whatever you, so wherever you're praying in, in, in your understanding, you're commanding, you're speaking, you're, de- you're determining, you're saying things must change. It's good, but just make sure that, you know, in your day, in your general prayer life, you're always undergirding and praying in the Spirit. And then while you're praying in the Spirit, so you'll be, you know, stirred to continue if you need to. Does that answer your question? Um, and, and so so the, the biblical teaching generally lies on the emphasis of utterance, not on the emphasis of thinking and prayers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah? So many people are like, you know. I pray my I pray my heart. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible doesn't teach that kind of prayer. You know, it it teaches that you want to, to speak out your prayers. Even Hannah, when she was praying in the temple, you know, for her child, she was speaking under her breath, you know, and then the priest said, I drank or something. Mm. You know, and so there has to be an utterance. There's a very specific uh, law of the spirit concerning being delivered into your salvation through a confession, homology, and and the the tongue must be involved. And so that's the James principle, Mm. that your tongue, give the Holy Spirit your tongue. So now you give the Holy Spirit your tongue, and then you have just... Amen? (laughs) Okay, so uh, John was first, and then we'll go to the east again and come back to the west. Thank you. Uh, morning. morning. My question is really related to First Thessalonians five. Yeah, no, sorry. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm just read a bit of it. Rejoice always, praise without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. I found myself sometimes when I'm praying, like I pray, like complaining, you know, complaining to God, like, why you do you did this to me and all stuff. But sometimes I feel like, yes, yeah, I was being honest with God, you know. I was telling him the truth, like, about me and I was complaining. But sometimes I used to feel like, uh, this is not faith, you know, like to pray to God like this way. You know, this guy sent his son to die for me. Like it's really, it's, that's really like good to complain to God, like praying in such, you know, yes, I have the authority to pray in all situations. Does it really have, does it really right to do that, like praying and complain to God? Good question. I just want to vent. <laughs> Are we allowed to vent? Thanks. I mean, always ask Jesus. No, don't ask me. Ask Jesus. <laughs> Next time you're talking to him, see if he answers you. No, um, I I was just looking at the scripture. So you were saying, is it okay to complain? Is that the is that the question? Yeah. Okay. So I think God wants us to be honest with him. In your prayer. Yeah. Hey? As your prayer. I yeah. I'm trying to yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see how to divorce. But okay. So. Can you can you complain? It depends how you define complaining, but can you while you are praying, can you be can you be complaining? The truth is, God wants us to be genuine with him. You know, how you're feeling, what you're going through, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's then important, you then have to just be careful because if you're complaining, you might be out of faith. So if you're like, oh no, you know, this is so difficult, this is so hard. And you're praying, you know, God, I believe that, you know, everything will work out well or whatever. Or like, you know what, you know, I feel so weak, you know, I can't get through the day. It's going to be so tough. God, I declare that I'm going to have strength. You know, you get what I'm saying. It's not, you're contradicting yourself. So I think being genuine is fine, but make sure it's still in faith. Like, okay, God, this is really rough. 
you know, I'm going through a difficult season. I, you know, even my body's feeling tired, but I thank you that your word says one, two, three. And this is what I'm trusting you for. Does that make sense? So to making sure it's always, you know, you're always in faith. I think that's the most important thing. Um, because obviously, you know, there are lots of examples in the Bible of complaining and not going so well. So, <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the David example, you know, in the Psalms where he will say, I ah, have my soul and not done that, my enemies and all of that. Uh, he always resolves in the end with praise, you know, yeah. that, that you are my rock, you are my yeah. strength. Uh, but it's very important that you understand who you are talking to. You know, because people don't fear God. You know, many many times if you realize who God is, you'll not just talk your nonsense things there. Eh? You'll not just come and say, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you were supposed to be there. I was there, you were late. <laughs> Where were you? As if God works for you. Right? So it's very important. Um, you, you, you must really repent if you are like that. Because you think God, God is working for you. You know, if God does nothing for us, in fact, if He kills us all right here, there will be no um, no appeal court where we can go for human rights and say, you know, our rights were violated. Can we remove that? All of us are voting Him out. There's no such thing, you know. And so our complaint to the Lord must be an appeal, a cry for help, you know. Uh, as a help me Lord I'm really I, I really I'm tempted I'm struggling in this place and all and then you wait for instruction you are not just offloading yeah. you wait for instruction and the Holy Spirit will tell you go and read your Bible you know, it? it will share it with your scripture and many times in that instance that's when we are like ah oh, I already tried that <laughs> you know then we try and debate with the Lord yeah so don't don't complain with God in the murmuring sense. God doesn't like murmuring. Remember, the people who were killed in the wilderness, they, they didn't enter the promised land because they murmured. Yeah. And Moses said, no, Lord, the, they will say that you killed them deliberately. God doesn't like murmuring. Because especially like John said, I, he gave me his son. What else do you want as a vote of confidence? To understand that God is with me. He made a promise. He will never leave me, not forsake me. Yeah, but then why are things not working out? Because of you. We are the weak link in the equation, not God. We are the fallen ones. We are the ones who are learning. We are the ones who don't know everything. Amen. So if you have to complain, complain about yourself. You know? Amen. Amen. It's very sobering, but it brings a humility. Yeah. We are busy with God here. This is not our friend. You know what I mean? Our body he is a friend, of course, <laughs> and not like that. You know, and we live in a generation that insults their parents. Yeah. How much more blasphemy against God? So really, you know, uh, David said, um, you are God in heaven and I am here on earth, so I'll let my words be few. Yeah? You can't find fault with someone who is perfect. It just points to your imperfection. Yeah. Okay, question. You can look at Job for that one. Yeah. That one was awesome. yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, so my question is maybe, you know, I, I remember, uh, you, know, you know, like I was a little okay, like I was like a new believer at that time. And I think it was, I think I went all of the guys who were you know, praying. And then during that time, there was a lot of, uh, okay, you know, like there was a lot of suicides in Namibia, you know, happening all over the place and everything. And then I wanted to pray against those spirits because, like you said, I wanted to take authority over the nation and community and everything. But I was, you know, sternly rebuked or like cautioned, you know, not to just pray against. The so-called principalities and everything. But by that time I was new, I was like, all authority has been given to me. So what are these principalities and everything? That's how I came and everything. So maybe you can maybe just you know share a bit of light on that. And then Chris, you can know what we don't because we spoke about the beginning. Amen. So we are talking about authority in prayer. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are certain things we don't have authority to pray for. Pray maybe we should, maybe we should either take this offline afterwards. Because I mean, isn't it, there's been a whole lot of discussion. I don't know who you had the discussion with. If it was, uh, then maybe you can fill me in with the context or. Let me give my side. And okay. Thank you. That will help. So there's a school of thought that is based on an experience. Uh, there's a prophet called John Paul Jackson, you know, recognized prophet. He's got like white hair. He's late now, about three or four years. And uh, he was talking about helping a church where the pastor was starting to pray against certain principalities. And then what happened is the woman in the church started to have miscarriages and blah, 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 and death started coming. And then they basically repented of, 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 um, of fighting against those principalities and, and then they just sort of stayed within their jurisdiction. Yeah. And so the teaching was, you're not supposed to pray against principalities, you know, and you're not supposed to pray, do warfare outside of your jurisdiction, sort of lay, lay on your mind <laughs> before you die. <laughs> Type of thing. So um, the, the, it, it, it is not defendable scripturally, okay? Because the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers in the heavenly places and darkness and all that. So we, we wrestle. This is what it says. We wrestle. Therefore, take on the full armor. Right? So if anything is happening in our spiritual warfare, where there are casualties, it's not because we don't have authority to do it. It's because we have not maybe been sufficiently equipped to defend ourselves in that dimension. Are you with me? The sons of Sceva. Huh? So the sons of Sceva, the Jewish priests, they are doing deliverance. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I enjoy you, come out. And then he said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, and who are you? And so he beat them and stripped them naked, you know, and then he sent them out. And what is their teaching? Don't have authority against demons. So a lot of people teach on the basis of their experience. Many times you try and cast out your spirit, it didn't come out. Then you say, no, this evil spirit doesn't come out, you know. Instead of saying, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. Lord, help me go. Mm -hmm. eh? And so we can't be, how can I say, we can't be reckless. This is real warfare. Mm -hmm. There are real casualties. There are real attacks. Mm -hmm. eh? We can't be reckless. Yeah? We have to be prepared. We have to brace ourselves for retaliations. Yeah? But it's not limited to principalities. Even when you are doing deliverance, you know, demons, blah, 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 blah. all of them want to retaliate. And the question is, what is the principle of armor? The armor says that the shield of faith is able to snuff out how many darts? Oh. All the fiery darts. So much of the time, it's our revelation in the word and things like that that we, we are breaking. And um, this is exactly the scripture, Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority over all the enemy's power. You will walk on snakes and scorpions, and you will crush them under your feet, and nothing shall by any means do you harm. That says that the God of peace, Romans 16, I think, the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Mm. So are principalities above Satan or under Satan? Yeah. 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 Are principalities greater than, than Satan or beneath Satan? Yeah. Beneath Satan, right? So if you can crush Satan, what is a principality? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. If anyone disagrees, show me scripture, not my experience. Okay? The scripture does not defend that notion. 
The authority is ours. Even, let me say this, we have authority over uh, our holiness in our lives. People are not even living holy there. They are not even exercising that authority. It doesn't mean they don't have the authority. It means that they are failing in the way that authority should be executed. Are you with me? I think it's answered the question. Okay. I think he's answered your question. Yeah. So I don't think I need to comment anymore. Okay. I know which book you're talking about, though. And I know which book you're right. I've read it. Huh? Yeah, I'll read the book. Um, okay, good. I think we're fine. Okay. <laughs> huh? I think there was someone before that, Lenny, that raised their hands. Hmm? Yeah. Lenny? Who was first between the two of you? <laughs> but you were looking this way, you didn't see teach them. Okay, for now it's my PSI, it will be better. <laughs> um, thank you, Pastor Ryan. Um, my question when it comes to authority um, is the scripture, um, Matthew 18, verse 18. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Um, that's the ESV. The Amplified says, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be proper and unlawful on earth, shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, permit, declare lawful on earth, shall have already been loosed in heaven. So, <laughs> which one is it? <laughs> can, we, can we affect heaven? Or are we just reflecting heaven? So yeah, the two the two scriptures, the amplified and the normal, do put two different things. You're right. The one most of the translations, except for amplified, say what you bind on earth uh, will be bound in heaven. Uh, what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So um, the amplified version, I think, is quite a nice one to stand on because that also speaks that also speaks about revelation. So it's like, you know, what's been revealed to you. So, you know, you've got, you've got the normal principles you can apply. Who is the example now? Um, I'm trying to think who it was. Um, I can't remember. I think maybe, maybe you mentioned it to me. I can't. But anyway, so there was, there was no, I think I was listening to someone. There was, he was praying for a sick auntie or something like that. And, you know, he was praying and, you know, the auntie was sick. And suddenly, you know, he had a vision. And then you saw this demon was running around her bed and you're saying, listen, I'm going to take her and et cetera, et cetera. He said, that night, <laughs> I mean, forget his house. The neighbors, I don't think, even the neighbors didn't sleep. So, and, then, and then by the Monday, the auntie was out the, the hospital and everything. But that's, that's a revelation. You know, his eyes were opened up to something. And then he knew what his authority was, so he dealt with it. So I think, so that scripture is, is really how, that's, if I had to choose, I can choose one of two. But that's a nice one to stand on the the the, uh, the amplified version. What has been bound in you know in heaven, according to heaven by heaven standard. Obviously, you know you affect that on, on earth. So it's also bringing the will of God, you know, down to be established here. So that's a good one to stand on. But can you, without revelation necessarily, without any insight into a situation, look at a situation, and say, look, this is not okay. I know some principles. Let me apply the principles. <coughs> I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so I think it's a, a bit of both. Obviously, yeah. um, the, the, there's a lot of people that are very careful about giving too much authority to the believer, you know, um, because then we'll just be a left, right, and center doing things. Um, but um, I've given you the keys of the kingdom yeah? and whatsoever. So this is your Peter, you know, the, the Christ, that whole scripture. I've given you the keys of the kingdom that whatsoever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Yeah. Whatsoever you bind. And so mm. um, how can I say this? The earth realm the earth realm was given to man. This, this, this is very important because people blame God for many things that are happening in our territory, but it's not God that is doing it. 
So when the authority was given to Adam and Eve, I give you dominion over the planet, they did something on earth that had implications spiritually. Okay? And so that, that principle there is very important that how you handle your authority is definitely being reflected in the realm of the spirit. So that whole thing of whatever you allow, whatever you allow here will be allowed. God, where are you? Where are you? Yeah. 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 Because you are my delegation. So um, the principle of delegation says that I left this guy in charge and whatever he did, I did. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> because I delegated my authority to him. Yes. It's, it's a power of authority that was given. And so this is what, what Jesus is saying. I give you the keys. So this is why there's a responsibility on us. We can't just say, oh Lord, do this if it may be your will. Then why did I send you? Yeah. Remember before Jesus says, um, I've given you authority over all the enemy's power and all of that. You'll uh, uh, walk on snakes and scorpions, crush them under your feet and all that. He sent them out and he said, freely you have received freely give. Any house you enter into, you'll say, what the Lord, do these things. Don't call me. <laughs> I sent you there. So many times the way we pray is like this. We go into a house and then we say, Lord, we are here. Come now with your power and heal this person and restore the situation. This is not what the disciples did. Jesus was in town and they didn't call him and say, okay, we have secured the, the venue. Come now. You can come now to do because we are nothing. We have nothing. We are not able to do anything. That's not how it happened. They came back and said even the demons were subject to us in your name, in your name yeah. because of the power of the, of the delegation. Yeah. Then Jesus said, do not rejoice because the demons are subject to you, but because your names are registered in heaven. Okay? Okay, we'll elaborate a little bit more on that, but it's an important principle. But then the Lord says, let your kingdom come on as it is in. So there is a part that has to do with the revelation. This side and that side. Anyone here? Ah. <laughs> it first teach and then tell any. <laughs> Guys, I said, raise your hands. And then I think we'll end with tell any. Hmm. All right. Um, the first part of my question. Hey. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. All right. Um, so. I tried to do a study around prayer, you know, looking at scripture, when people were praying, or when I found was specifically called prayer, was when people were speaking to the Father directly. Now, when people were declaring things, or when they were casting out demons and doing such things, I didn't see that referred to as prayer. So I don't understand. Mm -hmm. If it falls under prayer, or when we're speaking and declaring, is that still falling under prayer? And then um, going forward in that um, was the time Jesus cast out the demon out of the little boy. Um, I think he was coming from fasting and praying in the mountains. He had other disciples with him, John and someone else, and Peter. And they came and then they cast out this demon. The, the disciples were asking, how come we couldn't cast it out? And then he said, he, he went on when he was explaining just to them, and he said, through without prayer and fasting, you can't do this. And I say, does prayer and fasting sort of supercharge us spiritually so that when we declare we have the power, so that when we, when we operate with these, uh, with these other words, we actually have the power to back it up, or we're connected to God to back it up. Okay. 
So it's a two-part series. That's it. <laughs> part one and part two. The first, the first part is. Um, yeah, just remind me. Uh, prayer. Oh, your yeah, declarations and prayers. Yeah. Right. When we are asking God, compared yeah. to when we are declaring, is, is the declaration prayer commanding the okay. course of prayer? Yeah. Maybe that one, and then we'll do the next question. Okay. Okay, so declaration is definitely a, a part of prayer. So when you when you're speaking to something, it's definitely I guess you can call it a subset. It would fall under the greater uh, umbrella of, of prayer. So yeah, you might not be saying. You might, I, mean, I guess yeah, it would be funny if you say. I don't know how you would say it though, because I mean. So gee, we got authority. So based on that authority, and we have that authority from the Father, we are operating in it. We carry it, so we're doing it. So it still it still glorifies God. It still points to God. It still. But you're not asking. I think that's important. Going back to what you were saying, it's not asking the Father to do it. The power um, we have been given that authority to do it. So he's given it to us. It's like you. It's like you know, Pastor Chris gives me something. It still came from him. You know, he's the one who gets glorified for the demon being. You know, if he's if you're the father. So he is. So um, if he's the, the the father, still is glorified for the demon being cast out, for the person being healed, and all of that. But there might not be, as I say, he's given you what you're carrying and what you're utilizing to actually even bring that about. So he's still the main instrument behind it. If it wasn't for him, <laughs> he'd be in, in end up like the seven sons of Sceva. Does it make sense? So I guess that's my answer to that. Is that okay? Happy with that? Okay, we'll talk, we can talk some more afterwards, but yeah. What part two again? Three plus Oh no. Part one was to say is that declaring and all that is a little part of prayer. Right. How does fasting and stuff, isn't the fasting Doesn't make you more powerful. what enables us to actually go to church? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, strictly speaking, uh, prayer is communication between us and God. Yeah? And uh, so, but James says the prayer of faith will make the sick person well, you know. And so when we go to lay hands on the sick, in that context, it's called prayer, you know. Um, but... The way that we minister that prayer is not, Lord, you can do anything, but we, we can do nothing. So come now, you know. So, it's not, you know, nah. so um, without being dogmatic about it, the bottom line is you need to pray to God, and then when there's a situation, you need to address it. What you call it, yeah. you know, not so important. Yeah. Secondly, fasting and prayer. Does it supercharge us? Eh? Uh, is there any advantage? What have you seen? Because <laughs> you, because you're at the front, we want to put you in the hot seat. So I guess, I guess to a certain extent, I know it's not the way you use the word, but I want to say yes. Prayer, prayer does, I and mean, fasting does supercharge you. So it, it, it does. So, but let me qualify what I'm saying. The, the, the main thing about fasting, which I enjoy, which, which helps me a lot, I think which benefits, if I speak about me personally, is the, is the way it tunes you in more with God. Yeah. And I think that's more accurate. So, that, and that's really helpful because now when you're addressing situations, when you're dealing with issues, I mean, it helps from a point of view seeing things better sometimes. It helps knowing even like how to pray, when to pray, you know, when to shout, when to talk, when to, it just helps you be more tuned. So you can be more accurate. That's often why you get better results. Are there benefits of fasting? Absolutely. Um, it is Isaiah 58, I think. Eh? Yes. Yeah, you look at Isaiah 58. I mean, the list is, I mean, there's deliverance, there's healing, there's blessing, there's prosperity. I mean, there's just a whole lot of things that go with fasting. So are they not going to fix as a result? Absolutely. But for me, one of the main things is that it helps you be, it helps you be more, it almost aligns you better. And when you're better aligned, you get better results. And that's, so yeah, let me leave it at that. Yeah, I agree. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question is with regards to operating in the courts of heaven. We've got Robert Henderson okay. um, and uh, Natasha, I don't know how to say her name. <laughs> 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 how much? 
Yeah. Uh, who, okay. who speak on operating in the courts of heaven. Could you touch on that dimension with regards to, I'll speak as someone who uh, there is, we can affect heaven from where we are as in praying. And then after reading the books, I did, I did seek to go there and petition my, my case. And when I was explaining to my cousin who was also born again, she said, I don't understand. Jesus already has already given us authority. Now why did you have to what 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 did you mean? I didn't know how to explain that without reading the books. Is there a dimension of authority when you operate in the courts? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know this teaching? Have you heard it? Um if you can't even say a surname I was in <laughs> Sorry, no, joke. no, I'll comment, but so I haven't read Robert Henderson's okay. book. I haven't. Um, maybe let me comment, and you can, if okay. you've read his book, then you can add it. Or do you want to go first? Can you hear me? Okay. 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 I haven't read his book. We haven't read his book. Okay, but it's close enough. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like when you go, it's like when you go and study for your, for your matrix set work. It's yeah. like, no, 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 I watched the video of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't read the set work, but I watched the video. And then you're wondering why all these questions are different. <laughs> because Hollywood didn't do the air either. So, yeah. Don't watch the movie, read the book. That's the, that's the teaching. Um, maybe let me comment on that quickly. There are obviously levels in our, in our Christian walk where we're able to operate and where we're able to... Um, you, you see there's a difference between... <clears throat> um, what's the, how do you define it? Between... Ah, uh, um, experiential, and let me call it experiential and potential truth. So we are we are seated in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Okay, now that's the fullness of what we are. Yeah. Are all of us operating to the full extent of that? No. Possibly not. No. So, and as we grow in revelation, insight, and understanding, it becomes more experiential. Yeah. You know, we, we start to we it starts to become more of a reality, the fullness of what that actually means. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so the, the scripture I like <clears throat> the most, and I, and I hope, as I said, I haven't read the book, but let me just comment anyway. So um, Elijah says, 1 Kings 17, 18. I uh, think it's, it, it's 18 verse 1 or 17 verse 1. He says, the, uh, uh, the Lord God before whom I stand, and then he says, there will not be rain, you know, or dew, you know, for the next until, and, you know, I speak again until until I declare again. So he was, and the things he was saying that it wasn't a, it wasn't just a statement. The Lord God before whom I stand, he was consciously like making a declaration right there from before the throne. So in other words, he grown to a point where that was an everyday reality for him, and that's what we have to inspire to. I mean, you read the scripture earlier, Psalm twenty-seven. What do I desire? Yeah, let me uh, let me read it. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, not not by faith. <laughs> no, we, no, and 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 I mean that not in a bad way, but you know, it's, we do a lot of things by faith. You know, and, you know, and it's and it's, but but experientially, I want to know that every day when I wake up, when I when I walk, I want to be more conscious of heaven and where I'm positioned than when I'm here on earth. Does that make sense? So that's what we're aiming for. That's, I mean, we are seated in the heavenly realms of Christ Jesus, and we should grow to a point where that's the, the our main consciousness. And from there, can you imagine if that's your main consciousness, and from there you're governing and you're you're establishing and you're de- imagine declaring from being consciously positioned there, and that's above principalities and power. The thing will just whatever, whatever, wherever you are, whatever that thing is, it will go like that. So, so we need. So, what's the summary? We need to continue to grow. There's certain things which are realities for us. Once, and we need to push to a point where they're experiential, where we're more conscious of those than our surroundings, our day, the normal circumstances, the normal worldly circumstances. And as I said, the more we grow into that, then we're going to see dominion and power and glory like has never been seen. So, without having read the book, I hope that adds some value to your question. <laughs> okay, uh, so we, we've got 10 minutes uh, for a quick break, and then we need to be back for our next session. But, but I'll say this, what is most important with regards to our prayer intercession, all of that stuff, is faith. Sure. Because the method is immaterial. Yeah. If there's no faith, <laughs> 
it will not work. Right? And there are dimensions of faith and unbelief and all of that that many times we feel bad about. Oh, am I not believing? We shouldn't put ourselves in it. We should just realize there are ways that the kingdom works and we'll know everything perfectly once we are in glory. But while we are here, we are all in various degrees of growing. Yes. Yeah. But with regards to the courts of heaven, it is not a doctrine taught like that from the scriptures. If you just have the Bible, you won't necessarily get all of that. Right? It's very much revelation, which is uh, from the experience of the mm. individual. Sure. And if it's a teaching that's helping people, great, because it postures them in a place that allows them to gain faith. But it mustn't now begin to be the a way in which you have to pray if you're going to get something. I mean, uh, the notions are there, the widow that petitions the judge, and, 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 and uh, all of that is uh, teachings of Jesus concerning prayer. But he doesn't only do that, because he also says if a friend is in need, he goes to his friend at night. Now there's going to be a, a doctrine about the friendship you know, oh house prayer, you know, <laughs> where you have to knock four God. times and then you have to say, my sleeping. friend, my friend, and then the Lord says, I'm sleeping, me and my yeah. children, where the lights are out, then you must continue. You know, so all of that is an analogy for a principle. And as a principle is faith and confidence in God that comes from the Lord. Amen. 